the aspect jar. Let's head over to here to where I have this set up. Uh, we have the aspect former and underneath this one we have the aspect jar. The aspect former mm -hmm. takes raw lumens and converts it into energy for uh, uh, the jars. Let's see if I can get this to work. All right, guys, turns out I didn't actually have line of sight to this guy somehow. So if I come down here, you'll, um, plop down a warded jar, plop down the aspect former on top of it. Let's say we need some bestia. Let's click on that. It will pull the respective lumens it needs and fill up the warded jar. Now the aspect jar is very similar to the warded jar only it will take uh, far greater amounts to fill this guy up so as you can see that little bar is filling up and it's filling up relatively quickly let's uh, grab ourselves a bedrock pickaxe pop out of creative for a moment and look in there and oh my goodness we have 3600 air that's because it can store up to 5000 of the primal aspects and 500 of any of the compound aspects in the aspect jar and it can also store up to 16 types per jar now this was made only for the infusion uh stand slash process uh in thomcraft so it is not useful in any other way it can also uh, have its aspects uh, essentially piped directly into it. So that would be the aspect former and the aspect jar, both of which are some pretty neat um, cross mod interactions with Thomcraft. All right, so I'm in a new flat world because it's just easier to work with. Um, the next uh, item that I'm going to be showing off are these new lumen repeaters that are extremely low tier. Uh, this is the entire repeater, believe it or not. And they are made so that you can get pylon surge protection earlier than previously. I currently have debug test, um, so I can't exactly show you the actual charging process. Let's just come over here and show you what pylon surge protection looks like. Pylon surge protection will make it so that you do not um, get zapped by the pylon. So it's pretty nifty. So once you've selected it, you uh, left click on the little image and then you right click the ritual table and if I made this correctly it should have been all happy but I did something wrong oh there found the problem immediately there we go um, because I was in debug test this thing is completely full so let's just grab a new one and let's just try reach boost there we go. Oh, still thinks I'm in debug test. Regardless, that is the uh, table. These repeaters will draw. And they are multi aura repeaters, but they can only go into the ritual altar, as far as I know. Uh, they also have a set amount of lumens that they can transmit before they uh, no longer function. And uh, their no longer functioning thing. I'll let you guess, but this is Reiko we're talking about, so if you're any bit familiar with his failures, you probably know what it is. The next item I'm going to talk about are, oh well, is the Elemental Lamp. The Elemental Lamp acts as both as a light source and as a mob spawning uh, preventer. Um, how it works normally is you just place it down, it has a very small radius at first, but if you grab yourself boosted shards, just grab one of every type real quick. You don't have to use one of every type, but every type of shard that you use increases its range uh, quite substantially. And when it's at max range, it's a pretty darn large range. You'll know that it's working when you, uh, because if you right click the shards on there, you'll start seeing the animation play through for the various colors. So there I'm going. And once you have all the shards in there, like so, it's just a pretty much constant display of those little wavy lightning lines. And you'll know that no hostile mobs can spawn nearby. So it's pretty nifty. 
Well, that about sums up this episode. In the next episode, we'll be getting into some of the more opaque mechanisms within Chromaticraft.